Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 5th of May. Security tightened after cross-border tunnel detected in India's Jammu and Kashmir. PM Shahbaz Sharif slams predecessor Imran Khan after media watchdog degrades Pakistan. And Sri Lankan tea pickers' dreams shattered by economic crisis. And now for all the details. Security was tightened on Thursday in Samba district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory a day after personnel of the border security force found a small opening suspected to be a tunnel near the international border with Pakistan. A probe is underway to ascertain the possibility of any infiltration attempt by terrorists, a senior security official said. Security was beefed up on Thursday in Samba district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory a day after BSF, the border security force, found a small opening suspected to be a tunnel near the international border with Pakistan. The suspected tunnel is about 300 meters from the border outpost Chak Fakira and 700 meters from the last Indian village. It is believed to be a freshly dug tunnel and may have been used for infiltration by the terrorists. A senior BSF official said, adding that further investigations are underway. So this is also the case that our troops or commanders are on the ground and the surface of the surface or the surface of the surface of the surface is not able to kill any of them. So this is also the case of the previous counterpart. This comes days after security forces neutralized two Pakistan-based Jaish-e-Mohammed terrorists wearing suicide vests in an encounter in Sunjua area of Jammu district on April 22. The slain terrorists were suspected to have been picked up by a mini truck near Samba district. India has long accused Pakistan of infiltrating terrorists across the border to mount attacks on Indian soil, a charge Islamabad denies. After concluding his three-day three-nation tour of European countries, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in capital New Delhi on Thursday. PM Modi held several high-level engagements with the leadership of Germany, Denmark and France during the course of his visit, while also interacting with the Indian diaspora in all three countries. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in capital New Delhi on Thursday after concluding his three-day, three-nation tour of European countries, Germany, Denmark and France. PM Modi held bilateral discussions with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on Monday. He later participated in the sixth India-Germany intergovernmental consultations. A total of nine agreements were signed between India and Germany, including a joint declaration of intent on green and sustainable development partnership, under which Germany agreed to make an advance commitment of 10 billion euros of new and additional developmental assistance to India until 2030. PM Modi held talks with his Danish counterpart Mette Frederiksen in Copenhagen on Tuesday and discussed bilateral issues including trade between the two countries and cooperation on environmental action. A number of agreements were formally signed between the two countries including a declaration of intent on migration and mobility, MOU on cooperation in the field of skill development, vocational education and entrepreneurship, and the launch of energy policy dialogue at ministerial level between the two countries. On the third day of his visit, PM Modi attended the second India Nordic Summit with the Prime Ministers of Norway, Sweden, Iceland, Finland and Denmark. During the summit, the Prime Minister pledged to continue to deepen cooperation between the Nordic countries and India and focus their discussion on key issues related to international peace and security, including the conflict in Ukraine, green transition and climate change and the blue economy.
He also held separate bilateral talks with his counterparts of Norway, Sweden, Iceland and Finland. On the final leg of this visit, PM Modi held talks with the newly re-elected French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris, discussing a range of bilateral issues including defence, space, civil nuclear cooperation and people-to-people -people linkages as well as regional and global issues. Moving on, a delegation from the United Nations World Food Programme on Wednesday visited a facility in India's northern Amritsar city to understand the process of procurement, testing and transportation of wheat from India to Afghanistan. The team of five took a first in assessment of how long-term storage of wheat is being undertaken and praised the humanitarian efforts. In total, India plans to send 50,000 tons of wheat on an infrequently used land route through Pakistan in a bid to help Afghanistan facing poverty and hunger since the Taliban takeover last year. India till now has delivered the first tranche of 10,000 metric tons of wheat and life-saving medicines. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's newly elected Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif has slammed former Premier Imran Khan as the country has been ranked 157 on the Press Freedom Index during last year. The report by Global Media Watchdog Reporters Without Borders paints a bleak picture of the media freedom in Pakistan, terming it one of the worst deadliest countries for journalists, with three to four murders each year. Pakistan's newly elected Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Wednesday slammed his predecessor Imran Khan after the country's 12-point plunge on the Press Freedom Index during last year in a report by Paris-based media watchdog Reporters Without Borders. Taking to Twitter, Shehbaz said the ranking has not only earned Imran Khan a shameful title of Press Freedom Predator, but also placed the country's democracy in bad light. The report paints a bleak picture of media freedom in Pakistan, ranking the country 157 out of 180, comparing 145 in 2021 and 139 in 2018, when Khan, a cricketer turned politician, assumed office. It states Pakistan is one of the world's deadliest countries for journalists, with three to four murders each year that are often linked to cases of corruption or illegal trafficking and which go completely unpunished. Any journalist who crosses the red lines dictated by ISPR, the Inter-Services Public Relations, an intelligence agency offshoot, is liable to be the target of in-depth surveillance that could lead to abduction and detention for varying lengths of time in the state's prisons or less official jails, the report states. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken during a news conference this week said that restrictions on media outlets and civil society undermine Pakistan's image as well as its ability to progress. Shehbaz Sharif, who successfully led the opposition parties to oust Imran Khan in a no-confidence motion in Pakistan's parliament last month, vowed that his government was fully committed to freedom of press and speech. Moving on. Amidst narrowing forex reserves, International Monetary Fund has said Nepal should engage in monetary tightening including interest rate hikes to bolster its dwindling foreign exchange reserves without resorting to import curbs that could push up prices and hamper economic growth. Meanwhile, Nepal's finance ministry has said the IMF team's comments will be addressed accordingly. Nepal should engage in monetary tightening including interest rate hikes to bolster its dwindling foreign exchange reserves without resorting to import curbs that could push up the prices and hamper economic growth, a senior international monetary fund IMF official said on Wednesday. Robert Gregory, head of an IMF team that held week-long discussions with government officials, said in a statement. The government must address inflationary pressures and growing external imbalances while safeguarding the economic recovery. Nepal, a landlocked country between China and India, has banned luxury goods imports until mid-July to rein in capital outflows as Nepal's foreign exchange reserves fell over 18 percent to 9.6 billion US dollars as of mid-March from mid-July, enough to last the country around six months. 
following a sharp rise in the cost of imports due to soaring global crude oil and other commodity prices after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Nepal's international reserves have declined more than anticipated, the IMF statement said. However, a prudent budget, as suggested under its financial support program, along with monetary tightening, would help address the inflationary pressures and growing economic imbalances, the statement said. The World Bank said on Wednesday it would provide 150 million US dollars for the Finance for Growth Development Policy Credit (DPC) to strengthen financial sector stability diversify financial solutions and increase access to financial services in Nepal. Meanwhile, Nepal Finance Ministry official Ishwari Ariel said the IMF team's comments will be addressed accordingly. In news from Sri Lanka, millions of Sri Lankans are reeling from the island's worst economic crisis in decades. The COVID-19 pandemic severed the tourism lifeline of the Indian Ocean nation already short of revenue in the wake of steep tax cuts by the government. Plantation workers who hail predominantly from the island's Tamil minority have been affected more than most, as they own no land to provide a cushion against soaring food prices. The tea industry in Sri Lanka, which supports hundreds of thousands of people, suffered from the controversial government decision last year to ban chemical fertilizers as a health measure. The Sri Lanka Tea Board said dry weather had taken a toll on bushes that received insufficient fertilizer after the ban. Plantation workers like Arulapan Aidijodi, who hail predominantly from the island's Tamil minority, are affected more than most as they own no land to provide a cushion against soaring food prices. On a lush plantation, Arulapan deftly plucks the tips of each tea bush, throwing them over her shoulder into an open basket on her back. After a month of picking more than 80 kg of such tea leaves each day, she and her husband, fellow picker Michael Collin, receive about 30,000 rupees, currently worth about 80 US dollars after the island nation devalued its currency. Their earnings must support the couple's three children and her elderly mother-in-law. Arulapan is one of millions of Sri Lankans reeling from the island's worst economic crisis in decades. The COVID-19 pandemic severed the tourism lifeline of the Indian Ocean nation, already short of revenue in the wake of steep tax cuts by the government. The prices of staples have gone up, according to her, the result of rampant inflation after Sri Lanka was left critically short of foreign currency to buy essential supplies of food. Festivities have returned in Nepal's Lalitpur as the city is echoing with the sounds of traditional musical instruments amid the chariot procession of the Ratu Machindranath festival being held after two years of COVID-19 pandemic. People express they are elated to celebrate the festival once again as infections have declined. Festivities have returned in the alleys of Nepal's Lalitpur city as the idol of Lord Rato Machindranath, God of Rain, is being toured in the city as part of an annual chariot festival, bringing back echoes of traditional musical instruments. Thousands of people gathered in the ancient city on Wednesday to mark the festival with gaiety. The event that runs over for about two months began this past Sunday after being held in muted mode for about two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Devotees said they were elated to be part of the celebrations once again amid no restrictions, while infections have declined in recent days. खालो माने खालो उदास अब ना हमरा सब ये देश हर रोए को जाता है भगवान बने रोए को जाता है पूरा देश है बार रोए को जाता है आन बाबत है इस पहले जन सब ये को मन खुशी भागो था राम रो भागो था देन खुशी लगता है 
It is believed that locals started the chariot procession in the year 897 AD. According to the tradition, a date will be soon fixed by priests as per astrology to publicly display a jewel-studded vest, the centerpiece of the ritual, to conclude the event in the presence of the king or the country's president. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.